Hello and welcome to Lockdown Learning with Tragic O'Hara. Last week, last week, last time we made a eight bit some eight bit music using beatbox dot co. Beatbox. We made some eight bit. We made some eight bit music using beatbox dot co. And this time we're going to learn to make something that looks like this. And we're going to do you do it using a program and a free program called pixelart.com now it's p i x i l art.com they've spelt it wrong okay i never spelt it wrong they spelt it wrong um and we're going to use that to make some kind of retro game animations so when you go to the website and you open up it will look like this um the simpler you can make this, the better. If you look at a uh, computer game animations through time, like if you take the Super Mario Walk cycle, it's three frames. That's all it is, just three, fra three frames. It's not overcomplicated. It gives the illusion that there's lots happening because it moves so fast, but it's actually very simple. So what we're going to do today is make some simple stuff. We're not going to go over the top with this. Um, I would suggest you use either the favicon size or maybe 32 by 32. The larger the canvas you use, the more detail you're going to put in. So I'm going to open up a 32 by 32. I'm going to start a new drawing. Okay. Feel free to copy me as much as you can if you want, or just make your own thing as you go. Or with stuff like this, it might be better if you just watch it and then open it up and have a go, knowing where all the tools are, and just use it as a reference, and make your own stuff. So, on the left hand side here, we've got all our tools. On the right hand side, we've got our layers. If you don't know what layers are, a layer is, if you make an image, you can put another image on top of that, like that. In animation, there's also a thing called an onion skin. Now, the onion skin should automatically be set to show you what's underneath and they call it an onion skin because it's lots of transparent layers so if you have uh, something moving from left to right the first layer's here and the next layer's slightly moving over with the onion skin it will show you where it was in the frame before so you can keep track of how this is working so it'll move um, the onion skin will allow you to uh, move left and right and see, keep track of where you're going. So, first things first, I'm going to make a fish because I like fish and I really like the, the Super Mario fishies. They were my favourites. I'm going to use this, this tool here, which is the circle tool, and I'm just going to click and dr not do that. That's the wrong thing to do. Up here's your undo button. Any mistakes, just hit undo or your rubber tools there. I'm just going to not do that again that's that's not going to help right that's because of the mouse i've got and <laughs> drag quick <laughs> there's my fish there's my fish um i'm going to animate the fins rather than uh, the actual fish itself um what i'll do is i'm going to just fill that quick right there's your bucket tool down here's your colours. Now you're going to see me do this a hundred times, so don't make the mistake that I keep making. Pick your colour, uh, we'll go with pink, and you need to hit select colour. If you click off the screen, it'll go back to black or whatever your colour is, uh, and you'll get frustrated. So don't make the same mistake I make. And we're going to fill it. Okay? Then, we're going to use a pencil tool. And again, Select your colour and hit it. And I'm going to make an eye. Now, with the pencil tool, you can just click, right? Now, my fish is going to be side on, so I'm just going to make a very kind of basic eye like that. Then I'm going to change the colour again. And just make it black. Now, if you want to add a bit of texture to your drones, you can, like, I pick a grey. And I just do that. It kind of makes the eye look a bit as realistic as what an 8-bit animation can look. But it just adds a bit of depth. And then I'm going to outline that. Um, like that. 
select another color go for yellow I think my fish needs like an underbelly so instead of just clicking you can also click and drag and that will draw your line or what's close to a line as you can now if I use the bucket tool again and fill it it will fill it up to the next color so you don't need to worry about if you hit the bucket tool and the whole page goes um, that kind of looks like a puffer fish a bit. I don't know what game I've seen that in, but it looks like one of the kind of puffer fish. I'm going to put a set of kind of uh, lips on it. So we'll go orange. Now that I've said that 400 times, I'm not going to make the same mistake again. Always hit select color and I'm going to draw the lips. Now, one of the things you can do here is, ah, oh, in fact, right, we're learning as we go here. The lips, we can animate the lips. We can make the lips move up and down. So I'm going to put the lips on a new layer. The eye's going to stay the same. The fins will move and the lips will move. If I come over here to the right hand side, you can add a layer just by doing that. I suggest that you name your layers. So that wee button there will allow you to rename this as lips. And I'm going to rename my background as fish. And I'm going to draw and my lips now on the lip layer. Like that. And I'll outline it again in black. There you go. Um, We'll add another. So what you can do as well is here you've got your color picker tool. So if I pick that, click this, and then pick the color that I want, it means if I'm adding a wee bit of texture, from there I can select some other things like that. Except what did I not do there? I never hit select color. One. <laughs> did I do it again? Ah. Oh. Select colour, move back to the pencil tool. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes, man. So, there's a lips. Gonna add another layer, uh, and I'll make the fins... I'll make the fins white. Okay, select, rename my layer as fins. Okay, and I'll just draw in a very rough kind of shape of a fin, like that. Now my fin's going to go up the way, so I'll bear that in mind and I'll outline it again because things in pixel art look better when they're outlined, I think. Yeah, cool. Right, a, a tail. Needs a tail. Let's add another layer. Rename as tail. And again with the... That little arrow there will allow you to switch between the colours. So if I'm doing this, it's probably a bit easier and quicker just to do that. Um, I'm on my tail layer. got my pencil tool selected and I'll draw my tail. Switch the colours again and I'll outline it. There we go. And there is my first frame of animation. If I come down here, you can see the GIF frames. I'm going to hit copy frame, right? And when I start pressing play, you'll see nothing happens. But, now that I've got all my uh, layers cleverly named, I'll go back to the lips, and I'll start to rub out some of the bits. So the bottom of the lip's not going to move, but the top of the lip will. I can use my colour picker, and I'm going to draw this mouth 
closed. And outline again. Yep. Yeah, it looks okay. Go to my fin. Now, I can move this to somewhere else, but that won't make it look like it's... Um, if it's moving back and forwards, a, a fishy's fin, <laughs> like I'm a marine biologist here, will move differently. So I'm probably better starting a new layer over the top of the fin, go back to the fin layer, and this little slider here will decrease the opacity of that layer. And it just means that you'll be able to see it in the background uh, where you go on the layer on top. So if I go to layer four, layer 4, using the white, I'll draw this fin up here. And I'll outline it. Don't know why I sounded so excited there. Cool. Uh, and then I can just delete that layer. So to delete a layer, select it, and down there, delete. And I'm going to go to my, I'm going to rename this now, so I know what it is. Fin -z. to my tail now. Now the tail. What will I make the tail do? I could just move the tail down a bit. Yeah, let's try that and see what it looks like if I move the tail down a bit. Why does that happen though? I think I've not coloured in all these just yet. But when we put the background in, we'll see it for real. Okay, right. Now, go to my GIF frames and I'm going to hit preview. And you can see it's starting to move. I can using a when we open this up if you come here your frame speed you can slow the, the the speed down so let's try 250 milliseconds and that looks a bit more like a fish moving right cool now that we've done that let's go to our fish um, and we'll add in a background uh, and we'll make the background blue so Add layer, rename, background, using a paint bucket, we will choose the colour and just fill it. But my background is on top of my fish, so to move it up and down here, we'll move the layer down and then you go, let's skip to our... Second layer and do the exact same thing. Add a layer. Where did it go? Layer 4. Rename. Background. OK. And move the layer down to the bottom. And fill. And let's see what it looks like. Simple enough. What I'll do now is I will download that and export it. So we hit download and this will give us all the, the settings that we need to download this. We're going to download it as a GIF. We can change the size, but for what we're doing, 32 by 32 is fine. So I'm in the middle of editing this. What the silly man there should have said was the height is 32 by 32 pixels, which means it's like this. You, using the drop down menu, can make it much, much bigger. So when we move on to the next step and we start taking these GIFs and putting them, uh, converting them to MP4 files, which are video files, so that we can animate them around the screen, you want to have downloaded anything as big as that, as big as you can get it so we don't lose any resolution. That silly man doesn't know what he's talking about. The, what else was I going to say? The 
save it. That's what I was going to say. You can save it. You can save it as a number of different types of files uh, online. You can save it. Hold on, I'll just go back and have a wee look. Continue. I was making a U this was me making my UFO. When I hit download, so you can change the size, you can save drawn to the pixel art community, right? You can also download the frames. I would suggest if you really, really, really like what you've made, I would save the frames because we can then use them to make a video and uh, animate everything together. So just save it all, stick it in a folder, and next lesson, next tutorial, we'll we'll sort all that out. But that silly man only had half a story there. Right, I'm going back to editing now. And if I hit download, there we go. That's it there. So, it's a GIF. I'm sure uh, you, you are more than... Uh, You've, you've, you've experienced a few GIFs in your time. If you've been on the internet, you've seen a GIF. Um, what we're going to do with this GIF is you can upload this to a website, um, Giphy. You can start an account and you can just upload it on a Giphy, uh, which means you can then host it. You can post it on Facebook and people can see it or you can do it if you want. If we were going to put this into a video, we might need to find a way to turn it into a different file type, but we'll do that later. But there you go. That is a very basic way of making pixel art animation for free. Doesn't cost you a thing. It's not the best fish in the world. I think I've made better fish in my time. I've never caught a fish. But I did catch a fish once that terrified me. <laughs> terrified me. Um, and that's it. So, go and give it a go. Uh, make sure you hit subscribe. Um, give us a like. Let us know in the comments what you've made. Um, post me some links of stuff that you've seen in the Facebook or some stuff that you've made in the Facebook group. All these links will be in the description. And um, I'll catch you next time where I'm going to show you how to take this and put it in a video. Again, using free software. And that's us. Thanks. Till next time. Yeah, it was alright. Let's make a let's make something else. Let's make something else. New.